Hello and welcome back. I'm Natalie MacDonald and you're watching Dukascopy TV. Up next, we're talking fixed income. I'm joined by Annie Balmonraka of KBR Advisors. Annie, thank you so much for popping back in. It's lovely to see you again. Yes, good morning, Natalie. Thank you for inviting me. No problem at all. Now, the first half of 2014 has been a pretty interesting period for the fixed income market. The bond market Armageddon didn't happen for one thing. How would you characterize some of the activity and events that we've seen in the first half of this year? Right. Rates have been declining quite sharply and substantially since the beginning of the year, while at the same time corporate spreads have been tightening. And that has led price to move up and all indices of, I would say, sub-asset classes of fixed income have performed quite well. Uh, take an example of the 10-year uh, US and German boom at the beginning of this year, we're both trading at respectively at 3% and 2%, and now we are hovering around 25 and 1.2% for German Bund. The combination of fundamental factors such as a shocking and disastrous GDP growth out of the US at minus, almost minus 3%, 2.9% contraction, as well as signs of deceleration in China and fears of deflation hunting uh, invest European investors have pushed down rates quite substantially. And also geopolitical jitters uh, like Ukrainian crisis and more recently Iraq and, uh, and Israel have pushed investors to put a safety bid on US Treasury curve and German Bund. Now you touched on a declining uh, interest rates. Now the fixed income market for the last 30 years or so has really been a bull market as those rates have declined. With interest rates now at a trough really, how has the game changed? How much more dynamic almost are you having to be for your clients? It's a question of potential growth. Everywhere in the world, especially in developed worlds, and if I take the example of the US, potential growth have been declining. Uh, we've seen uh, in the US uh, where we used to have between three and a quarter and three and a half potential growth before the financial crisis of 2008. Now we would be more in the, the zone of two, two, point, uh, two and a quarter and two and a half percent. So that has been a, quite a change. The main culprit for that uh, weaker potential growth are, I would say, twofold. We have weaker demographic, uh, an aging population, as well as less immigration, if I take the example of the US, and that would lead to a lower consumption, and also the stock of debt, which is quite high. In fact, in 2007, before the crisis, we take uh, the study of Mrs. Yellen at the time uh, when she was at heading the San Francisco Federal Reserve. She made a study and showed that the percentage of household debt uh, in terms of per disposable income used to be in 2007 130%. And now, although it has declined to one, one, 107%, it is quite difficult for US consumer in this environment where we lack of confidence to take more debt. And that has really led to a uh, lower consumption. So consumption is 70% of the US economy. So that is, I would say, the main, the main reason. Now, the problem is that we will have, because of this lower potential growth, we we'll probably have a mild to moderate tightening cycle going uh, forward in the US. Even Fed members uh, voiced it and said that uh, Fed fund will not go beyond 4% uh, in this uh, next tightening cycle. And we can see that on the, the, the synthetic uh, euro dollar contracts where even uh, after 2017, mm -hmm. even 2020, yes, uh, short term rates or Fed fund rates will not exceed 4%. At the same time, there is a danger uh, it means that investors are being now too comfortable with a very low environment and are very complacent uh, and very complacent towards inflation. Even the Fed is feeding this sentiment among investors because they are saying that the NERU, uh, i.e. the non-accelerating inflation rate of unemployment is currently 5.3% where it used to be before, uh, where the OCD, OECD sorry, is saying that it would be more uh, between 6.5% and 7%. So the danger to this is that if the unemployment rate continued, continues to decline, it will lead to, uh, to a danger in terms of inflation, and investors will start pricing uh, inflation. And you know inflation is the main threat for bond investors. 
Could a part of this dynamism then, if we're, as we're moving forward, come from a greater acknowledgement or incorporation of, of automation and also technology? Something which some elements of the fixed income market have, have kind of been reluctant to adopt. Yeah, globalization and uh, especially the integration of Chinese and Indian workers in the global labor force, has, and as well as innovation and technology, has really contributed to push down inflation. And that was a very positive element for the fixed income. However, some countries, I would say, especially in the emerging world, have been reluctant to do that and have more been focusing on, current, on their currency devaluation rather than implementing uh, reforms and they have not benefited from that. In industry news then, if we consider sort of the fixed income industry, there's presently the view that fixed income spin-offs could in fact prove to be popular as many dealers are pursuing uh, joint ventures. What are your thoughts on these developments? Yeah, we think it's a positive. If we take the example of Credit Suisse, who, which re recently went into a joint venture with the high frequency trader Tower Capital and using the platform Wake for their trade trading of US Treasury and other fixed income, very liquid uh, instrument. We think it's a positive because if that can lead, I would say, to more transparency and efficiency for prices of fixed income instrument, that would be a great positive for a bond investor. So we think it's positive. And that happens because of capital uh, constraint requirements for banks. So I think, yes, it's a positive development and we might see more of these deals. Annie, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your insight with us. Always a pleasure to receive you. Thank you, Natalie. Annie baumann Raka there of KBR Advisors. Thank you very much, viewers, for watching. We'll be back shortly with plenty more exclusive interviews for you. Goodbye.